Today's video is on how to fix a resistance problem on one of these Proformer Cummins bikes. Pull it over here to see the model number, 235CSX. And the issue that we're having on this bike is when you pedal, you should be able to change the resistance up and down. But what my wife has been noticing is that it only stays on one level. So it's to, she feels like it's the highest resistance setting no matter what she does, up or down, nothing's happening. So today we're going to go through some things that you can check as well as the process to fix this so you can get your bike up and running. Not too many tools in this job, but let's jump into it. Let's go over the tools and products you need. Honestly, there's not too much and I try and uh, put these in order of kind of necessity. The, honestly, the, the things you really need the most are a flat and Phillips head screwdriver as well as one of these smaller flat head screwdrivers. You also need a wrench to take off the pedals and some more optional things, which I'll show you in the video how and where they come into play. Some pliers, multimeter, a hammer, as well as potentially an impact driver. The products you'll need for this, um, you may need new batteries. So these are D batteries. So you need four D batteries. And the part number here is, um, let's see, 193223, and it is a six volt resistance motor. So with that said, not too much here. Honestly, you really only need bare necessity for tools, but if you have these, these will help you out. Let's get started. The very first thing you want to check is the batteries. Obviously, batteries wear out, and that might be contributing to why the resistance is not changing. That helps power the motor. So if you go to the back of the display, this cover here and this cover here, or where the batteries are at. And you'll need a small Phillips head screwdriver. I'll just show you one side here. And there you go. So you want to check this side and that side. Try and replace both those batteries and check the resistance again. That might be your problem and it'll be done from here. But let's say you change those batteries and you still aren't able to change the resistance. Then let's continue on. All right, so basically all the electronics and what we want to get down is inside this housing here. So we need to take off these outer parts here so that we can gain access to it. First thing we need to take off is this upper shell, this upper cover. What you want to do is get a flathead screwdriver and push it between these two panels and then just gently pry. Okay. And then you just want to go up more to And now that we have this shell off, I'll show you what we're going to do next. So, once you lift this out, you'll see that there's actually a screw right here that we'll need to take out so that we can take this covering off. You could leave it on maybe bungee cord or whatnot, but easier just to unscrew it. Oops, to the other side. Now, you should be able to just pull these two apart. Okay. Here we go. And as you can see here, this little clip here pops into the bottom, and this all just clips in, and then there's just these two screws. All right, now let's start getting inside the motor here. So what we're going to need to do is take off these pedals. So if you can see, I'm gonna pull off this strap here. There is a little nut right here, or I guess it's a bolt that we're gonna need to un to take out. I'll try and get you a better view here. So as you can see, right there, we wanna take this off. So I'm gonna take a 17 millimeter wrench. It's a little loose, but it'll do the job. I believe this is reverse threaded. 
Yes, it is. Even though it should be tightening, it's actually loosening here. You can start to see that. Insider tip here when you take off these pedals try and have the pedals at like the 3 o'clock 12 o'clock between the 9 and the 3 o'clock just because if you want to use a wrench you don't want it close to the bottom so that you have to keep taking it off each time you turn it so hope that's helpful now let's move on to the next part here so now that we have the pedal off we want to take off this outer plastic cover again this is where the flathead screwdriver comes in handy so you just pry it between the red and the black. I guess I'll try and get it in like that. Pull out this too. And there you go. Now you want to slide it off the shaft here. And as you can see, there's little tabs here on the side that literally just coincide with these spots. The next thing we want to do is to take off this plastic cover here. It goes all the way around, down here, here, and up. So, to get this off, as you can see there's obviously some holes here where there's some screws. So we'll take out those screws, all Phillips head. And magnetizing a screwdriver is something really helpful here to get these screws out just so they don't get lost. If you want to know how to do that, I'll put a video in the card right here so that you can check that out. Another pro tip here, once you take the screws out, if you keep them somewhat organized of where they were before, you can just throw them back down in the little slots they came from, just so you don't lose them and you keep them where they were. Right there is the potential culprit. And essentially, what happens here is as you provide power, that electricity is sent here, obviously to the whole system, and then um, as you change the resistance, that goes to this motor, which essentially just pulls this cable here back and forth. As you can see here, there's the top of it. And it either goes clockwise or counterclockwise to loosen that tension. Now you might be asking, well, what does that tension go to? As you can see here, there's this giant magnetic wheel. Let me move the little step here. So as the cable in here gets pulled back and forth, that pulls on this cable, there's the other end of this cable here, and it moves this magnet up and down. And the closer this magnet is to this magnetic wheel, the more resistance there is. So as you can see here, the magnet is all the way at the top right now. And no matter what my wife would try to do or myself, it would not change the resistance. Therefore, this magnet is stuck in place, and if we pull it down, that would change the resistance on this, but obviously the motor should be doing that. So that's why I believe the culprit is this resistor motor. Now before we jump to conclusions and just throw parts at this, what we want to do is first check is there power going to this motor, and B, is the motor showing signs of being bad? And to answer the first question, what we would need to do, and with your multimeter, you can take off this clip 
here. But essentially, we just want to take off this red from this clear. So what I'm going to do here is pretend this is my hand. I'm going to push up on this tab here, and then like that, it comes out. So what we want to do, what you can do is take your multimeter here, put the two leads on the, the blue and the white, and test if there's voltage when someone's changing the resistance. So there are two leads there on the end, and then if they change it up or down, you'll notice the volt, you should notice the presence of some power. And it, the cool thing is, when they change it one way versus changing it the other way, you'll see power either way, but one side will be negative and one will be positive. And the reason that is, basically like how a, a window works in your car, that um, when there's positive, that, I mean, I'm not, don't quote me on this, but essentially that closes the window. When there's that reversal or that negative, that's when it would then open your window. So it's the same principle here. It's very simple of uh, when you switch that, um, that that's how that power works. So I have already tested this to ensure that there's power. And actually when you're pedaling, you can hear this thing making some noise. Let me see if I can actually play it for you. Maybe you can hear it yourself. So what I'll do, I'm gonna try and change the resistance and you'll notice this will start to move, but then it will stop. Try and change the resistance since there's some power. So as you can see, and maybe even here, there's power going to that motor. It's just not doing anything. Sometimes what you can do too. Give it some taps and see if, and try pedaling again to see if it works. Sometimes these motors just need a little bit of persuasion. Other times they do go bad. So that's why I've concluded that this motor's bad. It's whining, it's not moving, there's power going to it. So I think it's that uh, tensioner motor. Now I'm gonna see if I can show you how to test the voltage here. So to see if there's power actually going to the motor, what I'll do, again, I'll take off That plug. You can see when I put my leads there is change in voltage. So let's get this going. Let's try this again. All right, so as you can see, some voltage there and it should go away. Okay, now it's gone. Now, I'm gonna have the resistance go the other way. Let's see what we see. See, now it's negative. So now we know there is power being supplied. We just wanna now see about changing that motor. And again, what I did, I just turned it to DC volts here, and then I put my leads on the last two. So, let's just change this thing. So as you can see, it's pretty easy. We've already taken off the electrical connector. So all we need to do now is take off the resistance cable here, and then just take off the screws that hold this in place, and we're good to go. All right, step one, let's take off the cable. A lot of ways to do this, I'm just gonna do it my way. Grab the cable, pull back and around that lip. And remember the orientation, so the cable goes under and over here. And then, we'll just pop it out of the hole. Come on. 
right, cable's off. Now we just need to take off four screws. Okay, those are super tight on there, and I guarantee I'm gonna strip them. So, let's talk about ways to take out screws without stripping them. All right, so I'm gonna try a couple different options here. First, is to just get a, your screwdriver in there and next is to get a hammer here and just tap it So, nothing there. Next thing I'll try here is using a drill and an impact driver, excuse me. And just so you're not missing the fun. like I was able to get it out so there we go we got one out so the impact is really nice because it as you can see it can get up tough things like that I'm gonna try my little screwdriver hack again it's basically what we're trying to do is make this into an impact so as I'm twisting the screw, I'm hitting and twisting at the same time. Actually, look at that. The key here is just keeping the bit as straight as you can. As you can see, it's twisting. And I think I might be eating my words here. I think we might have to take off the other side to get those other screws. But I don't know, maybe I'll be lucky and can get it off. Actually, I don't think I will, because this wheel is in the way. Actually, let's see if we can. Use my drill here for this next one. Actually, no, I'm not because I can't see. No, what the heck? Let's just take off the other side. see any really any screws there's probably gonna be two down here so let's take those two out all right so you're still on the right side here but it's too tight for me to get my hand down there so I'm gonna Take it off on the other side, but you'll be able to watch me. So as you can see, I got the screwdriver in there. There you go, you can just Shift this around, try and get better access here. Just pull it out. There you go. No, I'll loosen that a little bit because that's how we'll put it back in. All right, out with the old. Let's put the new one in and get this working again. 
All right, so now let's test the new part, make sure it works. So I'm just gonna have it sit here out of the way of the wheel, plug the electrical connector in here. And as you can see, it's at the not, notch here is at the probably 10 o'clock position. So then watch as we change, she changes the resistance, all right? So go ahead and pedal. And whenever you're ready, go ahead and twist it all the way. See? Look at that. Moving all the way. And then if you could put it down again, but change the resistance down. As you can see, look at that. Full range of motion. So now what I'm gonna do is have it go back to the highest setting since that's where the magnet is. So if you can turn the resistance all the way up, please. And once this gets set, we'll put this all back together, test that it works, and then we'll close it all up. All right, so let's finish this up here. So next thing we'll do is get ready to put this new motor in. So I'm actually going to see if I have a stubby screwdriver just because it's a pain to try and have to use a full length screwdriver. Okay. And I just lifted it up here just so this lip and slide under. Beautiful. And now I'll put the other screws in just slightly. And then once I get it where to my liking, I'll sit, I'll tighten everything down. And the reason I want to keep these screws loose so that you can get all the screws in their respective spaces and then proceed to cinch everything down. Okay, so that one's in. Now we just gotta get the last screw over on that side. So all right, here we are on the other side, getting this last screw in. Kind of tighten down the other ones. The obviously easier side here. Really, don't just trying to get it so that these screws don't move the. So since obviously the resistance cable is holding on to here, there's a lot of force on this motor here. So I'm gonna snug it down here with the, my impact. At least as much as I can. Okay, there's that side. Try and get the other side. Now if you don't have a, um, a drill like that. What you can use is, again, your screwdriver and then just tap it and twist to tighten. That also works okay. Not as good as power tools, but in a pinch it will work. now comes the exciting part. So again, we'll connect our electronics here. Make sure that here 
The clearance between the motor and the little flywheel here is good. Obviously this new part was much more sizable here than the last part. Not too bad, but definitely a difference. So that is good to know. And I will link uh, in the description box this part so that you will know how to find it. Now, let's get on the resistance cable. So again, remember, it slides through here, up. I think the easiest way is to get, let's see, hold on. I'll make sure you see this. So let's, all right. So again, we go the little ball, or the pin goes in here. And then we pull that through here. And then just like that, it's back in. So now let's test this thing since everything's put together. I'll turn up the resistance. And look at that. Changing by itself. And so this is on the highest resistance setting in the way that I know that obviously besides being the one that changed it, as you can see here, at least on when it comes to the actual magnet, you have the flywheel now, the magnets are the closest to the flywheel, so there's the most resistance, and there's the least amount of slack in the cable. And now if we turn down the resistance, you can see it's now pulling this cable around and therefore pulling that magnet away from the flywheel so that there's less resistance. And again, we can verify that here. And looks good. Motor sounds great. It was able to change resistance up and down without any additional help. So let's put this thing back together. Last thing I'll mention, if you are noticing that the resistance is still a little bit too much, even on the lowest setting, what you can do is adjust this. So what you would do is you would just, uh, I guess you would be loosening this so that this barrel comes down and then you just tighten this jam nut so it doesn't move. Um, so basically, I'll try and say that a different way. So essentially, as you move this, I guess I can even show you, watch. Watch that little cable. I don't have the right size pliers, so we'll do this. Through. You can see that this tensioner starts to move down. And if you loosen this, moving it back up, it then moves it back toward the flywheel. So if you want to adjust the resistance, if it's not feeling comfortable, even at the lowest setting, this is how you would change it. And once you like where it's at, you just tighten the jam nut so that this doesn't move and you're good to go there. If you're curious on a little bit more information about the motor, I'll uh, talk a little bit more at the end of the video. But otherwise, let's get this thing back together. Um, one more tip I'll suggest here, since you have everything apart, keep an eye on this um, belt here. Make sure it's not frayed or cracked or anything like that because obviously if that breaks, that's gonna be another issue. Mine looks pretty good. It does look a little bit uh, worn, but there's nothing that shows that it might break anytime soon. So other than that, let's get this thing back together. First, I'll put on the outer shell here.
now that we're closing things up just want to make sure that the wires here are out of the way of the motor this cable here as well as the uh, pedals and whatnot so if you need to throw another zip tie on there great um, otherwise this should be totally fine make sure the connection is solid everything looks good and now we can put things back together same as the other side we'll just put the screws in on the cover So I just opened this up like a gate here on this side, just so the tab could fit into the little uh, space there. And now that that's held together here temporarily, put the screws in the bottom part here. Here, this is where the longer screws come into play. Another tip here is since we're putting two plastic shells together, if you will, a trick is once you insert it, Twist it backwards, A, so you don't cross thread it, but B, also so it goes into the other side where the threads are, and then tighten. Awesome. And I'm missing the last screw here, but honestly, it's okay. Next, we'll put in this top cover. So I'm just gonna place it over here. Slides on like that. And now we gotta put the screws in here. You can see here, there's a little plastic piece, put that down there first, and then push down, and it should click in just fine. So that's the video, if you learn anything new or you have any questions, uh, I appreciate you sharing them below or uh, also giving this video a like and subscribing to my channel. I try and publish how-to videos weekly. Again, I'll talk a little bit more about the motor at the end of this video, but just thought I'd share that with you. Again, really simple job. Just have to um, have a little bit of patience and some diagnosing uh, skills. And with that, you should be able to do it. Just to let you know, I spent about, uh, let's see, the bat new batteries are about $7.00. Um, and the motor I found on Amazon for about 50 bucks. Again, I'll put those all in the description just so you can easily find them. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one. So again, here's the part number. And again, how this thing works is as the console sends power, again, through the yellow and blue wires here, the polarity determines whether this wheel spins clockwise to uh, decrease the resistance or counterclockwise to decrease the resistance. So that's essentially how it works. Um, 
and yeah, hope it's helpful. I'll also link um, in the description the uh, user's manual for this specific model. That's a really another uh, good tip to start out with is check the user's manual. If you can't find it, just Google your um, make and model and part uh, user's manual. Read through there just to see if there's any other tips and tricks that they, the manufacturer provides you to help uh, diagnose and potentially fix the problem for free before you throw parts at it. Anyway, thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one.